Problem 17 of the book states that a compact sound source radiates 25 watts of sound energy uniformly in all directions. From this, what is the ratio of the sound intensity at a distance of 1 meter to that of 5 meters in a A. Two-dimensional universe, B. Our normal three-dimensional universe, and C. A hypothetical four-dimensional universe. When going about this problem, I like to think about how intensity relates to radius. So we know that like, for example, if we drop a rock into a pond, that wave is going to expand outward, but then the amplitude of that wave will decrease the further we go out. Therefore, we know that intensity is inversely proportional to radius. So we can set up an equation like this, where we have intensity one over intensity two, set that equal to one over R1 over one over R2, which leaves us with intensity 1 over intensity 2 is equal to R2 over R1. This is our proportion for 2D space. From here, it's as simple as plugging in our numbers. In all cases, I would be referring to the 5.0 as radius 1 and the 1.0 as radius 2. Plugging in our numbers, we get a ratio of 0 0.20 for our intensities 1 over intensity 2 for the two-dimensional universe. Some of you may think that calculating in a three-dimensional space is going to be a lot harder than it is in a two-dimensional space, but in actuality, it's basically the same thing. All we're changing is the factor that we're multiplying the radius by, because in 2D space, we're only calculating the circumference, which is a function of the radius. However, in three-dimensional space, we're calculating the surface area, which would be a function of r squared, so our proportion becomes i1 over i2 is equal to 1 over r1 squared over 1 over r2 squared, leaving us with i1 over i2 is equal to r2 over r1 quantity squared. Again, it's as simple as plugging our numbers for our r1 and r2 as we did before, and then squaring that value, leaving us with a ratio of 0.040. Now, in this hypothetical fourth dimension, we can follow the exact same procedure that we did for the third dimension by just increasing the exponent by a factor of one, meaning that our ratio will now be i1 over i2 is equal to one over r1 cubed over one over r2 cubed. And that eventually becomes i1 over i2 is equal to r2 over r1 quantity cubed, because this would be a function of the, I guess, surface volume, you could say. Solving for this is just like the rest, we plug in our numbers, and then we get a final answer of 0 0.0080 for our ratio. In my opinion, the trickiest part of this problem is just figuring out how to calculate for 3D and 4D space. Because 2D is simple enough, we know that's a function of radius, but for 3D and 4D space, we have to visualize that we're calculating for the surface area, and in 4D, the surface volume. But without knowing any of that, we end up getting stuck and overcomplicating the situation a lot more. But this problem is actually pretty interesting because we get to calculate for a hypothetical four dimension, which is pretty cool because we don't know how that would look or how we can experience that. We only have small representations of what that might look like or what they might be. So overall, I think that's pretty interesting. Anyway, that's all for me for now. And as always, thanks for watching.